we're back. It's Sophie and Marco dishing it out on Jeepers Creepers 3. Or maybe it should be called Jeepers Creepers 1.5 because, spoiler alert, at the end of the movie, the football bus is loading up and leaving town. A bus prominently featured in Jeepers Creepers 2. Back to Jeepers Creepers 3. It can be summed up in these words. Trucks and trials by horses. Meg Foster, who plays a crazy old grandma. A sheriff and sharp shooter. shooter lots of crows. A ghost. And of course, the creature with its 10 cam weaponized truck. The movie opens with a revealing shot of the interior of the tin crayon truck where there are stacks of white clothed wrapped bodies. Law enforcement is banding together to fight the creature. As the officers climb out of the truck, its back gate with spiky ends slams down into the shoulder of one of the officers. And so it begins. The focus of the story is on Galen and her dead son and granddaughter, Addison, who has a beautiful white horse named Rocket. 27 years ago, Meg's son was driving his pickup truck when something fell out of the sky and bounced off his truck and hit the road. He got out and picked it up and brought it home. At first, he... Then he buried it under a tree on his mother's farm. Now, 27 years later, he regularly visits his mom as a ghost and tells her that the creature is coming for whatever he buried and will kill her and the granddaughter or anyone else who is in the vicinity. The granddaughter who grew up in horrible circumstances as a survivor and that is a hint to what comes later. Marco will talk about the movie now. It was a very pretty movie, the way it was shot. It reminded me a lot of a student film. There were a lot of, especially at night, they, they, it didn't really look like at night. It, it, it looked like, like a set-up night. They had this, this fog that, that, parted where it needed to part to show the characters and they had some very interesting images and ways of shooting the movie and I guess editing it to make it look a certain way. I I think what really dragged this movie down was the slow motion, just the constant use of like, ooh, look at this thing flying into the arms of that guy and then kills him in slow motion. There's a lot of slow motion in this movie to cover up the fact that I guess they didn't have enough money to do premium effects. And I can understand that. I don't, I don't know how much money exactly they had, but I hope that this movie makes enough money that they can do better. Because the first one had some really cool effects. And I'm not saying the creeper looked bad. He looked awesome, and so did his truck. And the, the way the creeper was, he was, he, he and, uh, Stan Shaw, the captain of the task force, they were definitely the standouts of the movie. If, if you were just coming into this movie and you didn't know anything about any of the story, the history, you would still enjoy the performances of the creeper and Stan Shaw, who plays the captain. And especially at the end, spoiler alert, they have this slow motion shot of the captain with the minigun, and he's, sl he's trying to reload it as fast as he can and trying to shoot the creeper, and at the same time, the creeper's flying at him in the air, slow motion, and boom, 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 that was awesome. I, I was kind of weirded out at first because it was so slow, but again, it seemed like they're trying to make it 
cover up for the lack of effects and, and I think they did a pretty good job overall. I was very impressed with the pacing and the way that they just moved along, moved along. They didn't really stop that much to, to talk. And the characters, you know, they're horror movie characters. They're not that fleshed out, but they're fleshed out enough to where you know who they are, you know the types of people they are, and that works in its favor. Yeah, I would agree that <clears throat> if somebody was just seeing this movie out of the out of the whole series and never seen any of the rest for the first time, it wouldn't matter. It's still a, a good movie. I enjoyed it a lot. I just recently saw Jeepers Creepers one and and saw two many many years ago just once, and I really don't have a big memory of it just some and I still despite that I still enjoyed the movie I thought they did a good job and they did do a great job on the makeup for the creature who plays well the creature he was very ugly <laughs> and scary looking and big looking so as far as all the technical aspects, slow motion... Yeah, and do you agree about that? It seemed like they were trying to cover up for the lack of uh, budget to use for, like, explosions or just blood squirting out, stuff like that. Just make it look cool, make it look prettier so it doesn't show. Well, I don't... I That's okay with me. I get sick of seeing explosions. I think there are too many explosions in movies and uh, and believe me we've seen plenty of movies whether they're scary or not with blood squirting out uh, all over the place and so it's okay with me I'm sure that if it's popular enough they have a bigger budget maybe they will do more of a variety that's of special what I effects for. next time we'll see what happens there were a lot of times where uh, something would just fly into somebody, excuse me, fly into somebody or something sharp, you know, just goes into somebody. It, not not like a slasher movie, but the stuff, and Jeeper, the, the truck, Jeepers Creepers' truck was really cool how it was like a Frankenstein truck, what they call it. Had all these traps and that was really Spooky cool. Traps. Yeah. The, the movie seemed a lot like a setup, like they're introducing the truck more as a character itself, and then uh, introducing, spoiler alert, the hand that actually shows his background that we never get to learn, and just introducing a lot of things. And I feel like the next movie is going to be able to use all that stuff that it introduced and have a a kick-ass, action-packed horror movie that's still... I mean, th that creature is scary. I don't care if, if they have all the mini guns in the world, if they have all the, you know, whatever in the world. They're still... It's still going to be really scary going up against them. And uh, my favorite scene, I would have to say, is when the couple, they're in the truck... And they get, they get stuck. You know, there are all these other people getting killed. And they're sitting there. They don't know what's happening. And then a guy jumps at them, blood all over him. He's dead. And he drops down to the ground. And then the creeper's on the other side. And he's looking in. And he starts sniffing them, doing the infamous sniff. And uh, he... Instead of looking at the boy, he looks right at the girl, and he's like, I'm gonna get you. And then he goes to the other side of the truck, and he wipes a little part to look through at the eye, and they get really scared, and then he gets through the window in slow motion and grabs her, and boom. That was cool. That was my favorite scene. What was your favorite scene? Well, actually, I like that, too, because I thought it was funny. That was actually one of the few times, because in a horror movie, you don't really do that, but it introduced some humor. 
and it's good when you have uh, these heavy and it wasn't really too heavy but these quote scary scenes that you introduce a little humor once in a while to kind of lighten up the load and just mix it up makes it a little more interesting <clears throat> so that that was really um, I'd say that was my favorite part too I liked it too that you could actually see his face and really in see daylight. in the daylight and see more of what he looks like because in the previous uh, movie in one and uh, two you don't really get to see you don't get to see, for some reason you don't get to see him so close up and in detail well it's it's basically to keep up the mystique of the character and I think uh, it really felt like like setup like I was wondering when the other shoe was going to drop that you, you to keep the mystique of the character and to still see him in broad daylight I think it, it makes him a little more scarier because even in daylight when everybody can see him in, in the darkness in the first one it was like okay where is he now where is he now but in this one it, he's everywhere and he's he's not going to stop he can kill everybody and everything and you've just really got to run away or do whatever you got to do because he's going to come for you and kill you and I think that they're going to go with this where uh, <clears throat> finally the other side too the good side those people they're not going to be afraid anymore and they're going to come at him as hard as he's been coming at them yeah I would agree I just wanted to bring up you were talking about his mystique I am hoping that in the next movie which I don't know if there will be movie other movies after that or this is the last movie I have no idea but I hope that they talk more about his backstory. They just said, spoiler alert, but it's really not that much of a spoiler alert, that he's an ancient monster. And I won't say how they figure that, how they know that, because we don't need to tell you everything about the movie, but that's all they said. But they don't give any other clue as to what, where he came from, how he came to be. Why does he look the way he looks? Or, and, you know, here he is. He's an ancient monster, but he knows how to soup up a truck to where it has booby traps. It's amazing. It, it, it's it can, bulletproof. The bullets just bounce off of it and kill you. <laughs> yeah, and also uh, the speed. It can go amazingly fast. Probably could be go as fast as an Indy car driver, which... Or, car which can go over 200 miles an hour I mean it goes fast so how does an ancient creature know how to soup up a truck so that it has booby traps and drives fast I think that we need uh, I, let, let's get into discussions about what we'd like to see in the future I think number one what would be cool is I, I'm a huge horror fan so I, I'm going to pair them up with the perfect match to versus I'm going to say, how about Jeepers Creepers versus Leatherface? <laughs> yeah, they both have weird looking faces, that's for sure. I mean, imagine that. You have, they, they both have the, the southern vibe of, like, this is the type of thing when you go down to the south and it's the middle of nowhere. Just imagine these two guys going at each other. You could add in the the family with the the hitchhiker and and have a fun ride with that. But also, on a, on a more lighter side, I think it'd be really funny to have like a an ancient Roman prequel where uh, it's like a Fast and the Furious mixed with Jeepers Creepers, where uh, where he creates this big uh, truck carriage thing and he battles all these other people and carriage things and it's it's like oh this is his origins he he used to be in fast and the furious and now he's a retired race driver or something i think that'd be really funny because how did he 
how did he learn to, to do all this stuff? Was there a mechanic that helped him? Did he have a, a crew? Did he have somebody that made this for him? Because this, this vehicle, it's, it's more powerful than a tank. Well, or is a hybrid of some kind of creature and some mechanic, a uh, phenom mechanic. <laughs> the interesting thing is that Stan Shaw's character said that the images that he saw didn't matter. And I know that pissed some people off. They're like, whoa, you just spent 15 minutes with this stupid backstory. Like, how did he, you know, whatever. And you're not even going to explain it. Well, screw you. Well, I, I think it's just, it's set up. You know, you they want to have you want more. Because this movie... It was not made on a high budget. It did not get to do a lot of things that that would make it more action packed. It, it could have done a lot more, and I and I think they're planning for a lot more. And so I think everybody, what they should take away from this movie is, we want more. We want more. We need to tell them we want more of this. We we're not gonna. You know, boycott this movie. We're not going to not watch this movie. We're going to watch this movie and support it for being a great horror movie. Because that's what it is. It's a great horror movie. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, we definitely want another movie at the very least. And if possible, I mean, it's only going to enhance the movie to have something about his backstory. Actually, you might have a whole movie dedicated to the backstory. Of course, I'm not going to give anything else away, but at the end, something happens to where you you want to see. They're 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 yeah. setting the they're setting the stage for another movie incorporating what happens at the end of this movie. So that will be the next movie. But it would be nice to have either incorporate his backstory into this or have a, another movie with it and then another story or something. Why not? I mean, they've had all these Halloween movies and other yeah, just horror movies. Why not this series? Just think about it. We have had the Leprechaun in space. <laughs> we have had Critters in space. We have had Texas Chainsaw 3D with hardly any violence at all. We have had nine Friday the 13th with Jason in space. Where's my Jeepers Creepers in space? When am I going to get that? Well, I don't care about Jeepers Creepers in space. I, I don't just like I'm just joking. I would just like to see the rest of these, uh, these other stories. It's, I mean, obviously, he's like Michael Myers in Halloween. He can't be killed. <laughs> At least so far. Oh, well, they've already changed that, mind you, with the new Halloween spoiler alert, guys. But they're making him mortal so that they can More kill what? him. They're making him mortal so that oh, they can mortal. they can end the franchise once and for all, which I think is really stupid, uh, personally. Not to, not to insult the movie already, because we haven't seen it yet. But anyway, what would you rate this movie on a scale of Foods. Hmm. Well. Um. Well, I really, I like the whole experience. We went in there, and we haven't been to a movie in a long time. We usually go a few weeks later after the opening, and there's only a few people in the theater. This <laughs> theater was packed. And. And everybody was excited, and it, it just, it felt, it felt happy. And it there was, was like even a, a gangster couple that was really weird and distracting at first. Yeah, you know, something weird happened, and everybody was quiet, like, I don't know, like we were going to have to evacuate the theater or something. It was some yelling, real quick yelling, and... Then yeah. somebody walked out. And that really was... took me out of the movie at first. I, was, I wasn't very into the movie because that happened. Well, I, I was a little apprehensive too considering all the things that have happened in the years and lately. But 
it all worked out. Everybody was having fun. I liked that. And so I, I'm kind of into chocolate today. So I guess I'll give it a, um, I'll give it a chocolate mousse. A nice cup of chocolate mousse with some whipped cream on top and some chocolate shavings. Same as Jeepers Creepers 1? Yeah, I think so. Really? Well, well maybe I'll add some sprinkles with the <laughs> shavings to give it a different, to give it, a, to make it happier because it was a, it was a nice way to escape, especially right now and, um, and everybody was having fun. It's nice to see people go out and have a good time. It was nice to see the theater all crowded. We had a good seat, so it didn't matter if it was crowded or not. Nobody was crowding us. We could see in front of us. Nobody was kicking us from behind. I mean, it was okay. I mean, it was a great experience. I could I could feel a little bit. I think there was some large person behind me because I felt, I felt some pressure in my seat. But I, I, I don't care. I'm I'm not gonna get up in the, the movie and start yelling at somebody unless unless somebody really bothers me. Because over the years I've I mean, we go to the theater, there's nobody in there. Right. We went and saw Amazing Spider Man two for for free since I got the the video game and <laughs> there was literally nobody in the theater. And so I'm really used to that, so I'm not gonna have a fit over that. I would rate this movie a slice of chocolate pie with chocolate crust and a little whipped cream on top. And I give it that because it's short and sweet and it makes me want more. If, if you know anything about me, I don't like pie because you have one slice, you just want to keep having more slices. And that's what this movie made me feel like. When I'm I, when am I going to get the next slice? I want another slice right now. Mm. <laughs> well, I guess we're really into chocolate today. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, you have any final words? No, go see the movie if you can. On October 4th. October 4th. It'll probably be an evening showing. Yeah, but 7. But that's fine because it's probably because it's a scary movie. It's apropos for it to be at night where it's dark. So, bye-bye. Well, please like and comment on this video if you have any suggestions. And subscribe to our channel if you want to see more of these types of videos. You know, don't just, don't, don't. If if you want, I do this. I I do this mistake all this, all the time where I see a video, and I really like it, and then I don't subscribe to the channel, and then I forget what the video was or what the channel was. I'm like, damn, I wish I would have subscribed to that channel so I could see more. So please do that if you want to see more of these. Goodbye. Bye everybody. See you later.